well, look, diabetes is the eighth leading cause of death across our country. Obviously, it is pervasive, it is prevalent, and it is particularly dangerous in and around San Antonio. And it's why we're talking about it today, because this month, it is Diabetes Awareness Month. I know we've had some technical difficulties. We're going to see if this works. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Carolina Solis Herrera with UT Health San Antonio Diabetes. It's the eighth leading cause of death in the United States. Good morning, Dr. Solis Herrera. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, good morning, guys. Uh, thank you for having me. So before we really dive into the specifics about prevention and everything of that nature, how problematic is diabetes in and around San Antonio? Diabetes is a world pandemic. Right now, it's really a healthcare emergency. In San Antonio, about one out of six people have diabetes, and unfortunately, one out of five people do not know they have it. The only important thing is to remember that type 2 diabetes is now not only a disease of the adult, it's also a disease that is affecting our adolescents and our children. And for that reason, it's really important that we know our risks and we also test to see if we have diabetes. So Dr. Solis said that according to the CDC, more than half of Hispanics, Latino adults are expected to develop type 2 diabetes in their lifetime. This has kind of been the narrative for, I want to say, almost 10 years now. But why is are we still seeing that today? Why is there such a lack of education about, you know, the seriousness that type 2 diabetes can have on someone's life? Type 2 diabetes is uh, more frequently, unfortunately, in minorities, including the Hispanic population. And as we know, about 65% of our population are Hispanics. So uh, those risk factors being Hispanic or African-American, Asian, et cetera, can uh, increase your risk of diabetes. And then of course, uh, it's really important that we always keep bringing education, education regarding um, being uh, active, having a healthy lifestyle, healthy foods, those things uh, will really help us decrease the prevalence of diabetes, but this is why awareness is so important. Oh, we love Leading SA because we actually get feedback from our members of our community. We did have someone write in asking a specific question, saying, what happens if they start to develop symptoms? Is it too late to stop? Absolutely not. So not only there is diabetes, there is also something called prediabetes, which is a condition that we consider to be the prequel of diabetes. And prediabetes is even more prevalent in our country. One or two adults have prediabetes, which means an abnormal sugar. And about 75% of Americans are overweight or obese. So working with your weight, checking your sugar is the best way to be able to prevent it. So this is why it's important to go to your doctor, get checked, and there are questionnaires that you can fill where we can assess your risk and get you tested. You know, we hear a lot about type 2 diabetes. We don't really hear a lot about type 1 diabetes. Uh, my husband is a type 1 diabetic, so I know of the severeness that this disease can take on a household. But for people who don't know, so how are they different or the same? Well, thank you for that question, because that is not widely known. Uh, diabetes in general uh, is extremely prevalent. As we said, it's about 10% uh, of the Americans and in San Antonio is about 16%. But uh, type 1 diabetes is a completely uh, different disorder. It's an autoimmune disease where monoclonal antibodies, little antibodies, go to your pancreas and they start attacking your pancreas, the organ that produces insulin. And so you cannot produce enough insulin to lower your sugar. Type 2 diabetes is more associated with older age, uh, being overweight, being sedentary, drinking too many sugar drinks. And then of course, um, family is important, right? So if you have siblings, if you have parents with type two diabetes, you also have an increased risk. The other two factors that are important that we don't talk much about is if you had history of gestational diabetes, or if you had a large baby over nine pounds, that puts you at a very high risk that in the next 10 years you can have diabetes. And this is why it's important to follow up with your health care provider. All right, doctor, last question for you. We know a lot of families watch this Sunday show. What should they know in terms of preventing diabetes or prediabetes for especially their younger children? 
So the most important thing is a healthy lifestyle. Improve your weight, eat vegetables, green vegetables, non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, beans, lentils, and try to incorporate that in every meal. So having a good weight and good physical activity more than three times a week, 30 minutes, everything counts. So if you park a little bit farther, if you do a couple of flights of stairs, everything helps to keep you at a better weight and more physically active. Of course, detecting the symptoms, thirsty, hungry, losing weight involuntarily, are alarm signs that should prompt you to approach to uh, your uh, healthcare provider. Um, November 14 is uh, World Diabetes Day, and uh, we honor it around the world with health fairs. So we will have one, our UT Gateway Clinic in Worsbach and Fredericksburg. And you can come assess your risk, and we can also test you for diabetes and give important nutritional advice regarding a healthy lifestyle. Well, Dr. Carolina Solis Herrera, thank you so much for joining us. And for all of our viewers, you can watch this interview in full later this afternoon on KSAT.com. Thank you, doctor. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.